We're going to have an in-depth conversation here about kids who have difficulty making friends. It's a major subject. I'm Greg Bear, and I've been loving and teaching parents so that they can love and teach their children. And I've been doing this for a long time. If you find value in videos like this, click the like and subscribe buttons and go to reallove.com for much more reliable, actionable advice. We tend to get afraid if our children are having a hard time making friends. We think, what if they have problems connecting to people all of their lives? Will they be lonely? Is something wrong with them? So we want to fix the problem. Understandable, but first we need to really see and understand our children. We cannot solve the making friends problem as though it were independent from everything else going on in our kids' lives and just as important in our lives. Kids who don't easily connect with other kids are almost universally afraid of disapproval and rejection. So they tend to protect themselves by withdrawing from people. We might call it shy, but it's fear. And that fear in a child always begins at home. If we want to help a shy child who can't make or keep friends, we parents must begin with ourselves. We want to fix our kids' problems right now. We badly want a shortcut, but that's not possible with human beings who have been emotionally wounded for a lifetime. Imagine that you're about to get on a commercial flight where you'll be shooting up to 30,000 feet, flying for a couple thousand miles and landing on a concrete runway. Would you be alarmed to learn that the pilot had just barely completed a 30 minute online course in flying with no practical experience? That's all the training he's got. Yeah, that would be terrifying. You'd get off the plane. And yet, parents have even less training than that. And our job is both more difficult and more important. Parents, we have to study, just like a pilot. We have to thoroughly study the parenting training that's found at realloveparents.com. You can watch the podcast like you're doing right now, along with the hundreds of videos that are available, thousands actually. Learn how to love and teach your kids. When you take it seriously, you'll see amazing results. I cannot tell you how many times parents have tried just to teach a child to make friends, as though it were an isolated activity. They make playdates, for example. They encourage their child. They tell the child not to be afraid. And usually, almost uniformly actually, they fail. Because what a child needs most in order to make friends is confidence. It takes real guts for a kid to reach outside herself to interact with another child. It's risky and scary. Confidence comes from feeling worthwhile, which in turn comes from the acceptance, love, and guidance of a parent. And confidence is destroyed in seconds by the disappointment or irritation of a parent. A child cannot tolerate these emotional assaults. Sounds like you have almost an impossible job, right? Again, learn how to love your children unconditionally in the parenting training. Now, to be fair, can a child make friends without feeling unconditionally loved? Yes, but almost never are these real friends. They're just trading partners. When an unloved child has friends, they're simply good at providing entertainment, uh, or they're compliant, or they offer some service or physical appearance, or whatever, in return for approval from others. That's called trading. It's survival. It's not competent or confidence. It's just competence at getting praise, attention, and approval. And kids learn that at home too. But those kids who have learned to successfully earn approval are not the children that parents worry about when it comes to making friends, are they? No. So back to your child who has no friends. Again, first, you have to learn to unconditionally love and teach your child. Then you can begin the process of finding friends for your child. For example, you might know a mother of a child compatible in an age group similar to your child's. You and that parent 
then can create a time when the kids could be together, a play date, they call it. That's one way. Or you can role play with your child and suggest approaches for striking up a friendship at school or wherever. Let me give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> In the role play, your kid is at lunch and instead of eating alone, as many kids do, he just sits down opposite some other kid and just begins a conversation. You will need to help your child with things to talk about. You can't just tell your kid to sit opposite another kid and strike up a conversation if they're shy. So you practice being the other kid and you practice being your child while your child is the other kid. If your child thinks he might enjoy more time with a particular child, he simply says, want to come over to my house sometime? Then he asks for the kid's cell or the number of the kid's parent so that you and the other parent can work out a time and place. Practice this interaction where you play the part of your child and then you pay, play the part of the other uh, kid. Now imagine that this process succeeds and the other kid is there at your house. I wanna take just a moment and look at one example of such a child who did this, who invited somebody over to his house. A mother wrote to me and said, my son Noah has had a hard time making friends. He's pretty shy. He'd rather read books. This mother had learned a good bit about loving and teaching. She studied the parenting training front to back, watching the whole thing twice. I talked to her about play dates and such, and she arranged for a kid to come to their house. She even talked to Noah about what they could do, like shoot Nerf guns and new Nerf bows and arrows and play Legos and whatever. Mom texted me and said this, quote, Noah was so excited this week for a play date that I'd set up with his friend from school. He talked about it multiple times, but now they're one hour into their time together and Noah has already retreated into his room to read while his friend is there. I went in and talked to him and told him that he was ignoring his friend, which is pretty rude, end quote. And mom, yeah, you're right, it is rude. But right now, Noah wouldn't care much about that. He's retreated into his room for another reason. He doesn't care about civility or etiquette or social rules. Something is going on here that resulted in Noah running away. So let's look at a few of the possible reasons for Noah avoiding another kid. One reason for avoiding. The other kid did something that made Noah feel unloved or afraid. So ask Noah how it went. Don't just say, how did your visit go? You have to get specific, because you, if you generalize, you'll get some meaningless response like, well, it was okay. You can't let that go because something's wrong. Say, no, it wasn't okay or you wouldn't have left. Now your tone has to be neutral here. There was something you didn't like about your time with this other kid. Now, almost certainly he knows what it is, but he may not be able to articulate it. He might need help. If so, probe lightly. You might say, did he say anything unkind? Or was he boring? Or was he controlling? How can we help our kids if we're not informed. So you have to ask these questions. And kids rarely, if ever, tell us spontaneously the stuff they need to understand. They don't, they don't know how to ask the right questions. When a friend is at your house, you might even make some effort to listen. Listen at the door for a few moments as you pass by, for example. Is that eavesdropping? Yes, uh, and you're doing it for the benefit of your child. If you ask Noah questions about his friend, or you listen to them interact at the door, you might arrive at a second reason for Noah running away. A second possible reason could be, Noah did something unkind and the friend reacted in a way that Noah didn't like. Then you can teach Noah how to make different choices. Teach him how to be cooperative and thoughtful instead of whining or teasing or controlling or grabbing or whatever Noah did that the friend didn't like. There are always lessons to be learned and if you don't teach them, who will? You might say, for example, 
when you left your friend alone in the next room, what message do you think your friend heard? Instead of just telling him that he's being rude, say, say that. Ask him, what do you think your friend heard? No one needs to see that when he protects himself or simply ignores the needs of others, he's telling them that he doesn't care about them. And that's not a message people like. Certainly he doesn't like it when you are unloving to him. You need to say that so that you're being vulnerable and showing him what vulnerable looks like. A third possible reason for Noah leaving. Noah is still just generally afraid. And this was too much interaction. That's a very common explanation. The fact that you've just begun studying real love relative to parenting is proof that you've wounded Noah in a great many ways, as all parents do to varying extents, most of which you weren't even aware of. The healing of these wounds doesn't happen immediately. So keep loving and teaching him, and he'll be better prepared for his next experience with a friend. This is just one. The process of learning goes on and on. Remind Noah that he's just learning how to feel loved. So interacting with others will not be smooth in the beginning. That will help him to feel better. A fourth possible reason. Noah is simply not that much interested in people. We don't like to talk about that one, but it's a real thing. When you ask about why Noah left his friend, he might say something like, it just wasn't fun. He doesn't look afraid. He didn't have a fight. Uh, you don't see evidence of conflict. He just goes, mm, wasn't fun. It's still most likely that something unloving happened between them. So in future play dates, be more attentive to listening to parts of their interactions. But it's also possible that Noah is just not much interested in other people. If that's true, you'll see a pattern of his doing things by himself generally, not just with that particular friend. Like he prefers to do things by himself when the family's doing fun things. Don't conclude too quickly though that he's a natural loner. Try several other play dates with friends and be observant of him at home. What are some signs that he might not be a people person? Well, he's not really afraid of having a friend over. He's just not that interested. If you pay attention, you can tell the difference between fear and just mm, he doesn't care if somebody comes. But see, Noah did show some interest in the friend coming over. He was excited. Second, he shows no interest in, make, interest in making friends at all, uh, which again was not true with Noah because he was excited about the play date. Another indication that he's not a people person. He shows a distinct preference for intellectual stimulation and is relatively bored by the stories and social interests of other people. This is not particularly rare. I have read hundreds of biographies and a great many prominent writers, artists, and scientists, to name just a few occupations, have been focused on their fields of interest to the point of almost excluding social activities. Many of these people have just really not cared to socially interact. And I have known a great number of those people personally. If a child is introverted, not really a people person, it's not a disability. We don't need to give them a pill. He might not enjoy groups, but he can still find a single person to spend the rest of his life with, like a life partner, someone who enjoys his distinct personality, or he might find just a really tiny group of people. With Noah, keep practicing, keep loving, keep teaching, keep observing him, keep learning. You'll figure it out.